Hey there, welcome back to Hardcore Sustainable. I realize it's been a while since I did a video. I've been kind of busy working on a bunch of different projects and I'm going to tell you about one of them a little bit later. This video is going to be about my favorite houses at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village. I've got a list of 10 houses and I'm going to do five in each of two videos. I'm just going to talk about them from the outside. Um, I'm not going to get permission to go into everybody's houses and give an interior tour. I do have some footage of the interior of some of my favorite houses and I'll, I'll put that in this video. And then hopefully in the future I can get permission to do more in-depth tours of the interiors of all of these ones. And you're really going to want to stick around to the end of this video because especially that last house is just pretty spectacular and you don't want to miss it. So stick around till the end. But yes, Dancing Rabbit is like one of the best examples of natural building, you know, in the country because it's one of the few places that you can go to and see like a lot of buildings in one place that are examples of different natural building methods. We've got almost 40 natural buildings here. And so outside of Crestone, Colorado and maybe Earth Haven in Asheville, I think we're probably the biggest collection of natural buildings in the country. That's why a lot of people come here, it's just to see the unique buildings and the unique ways that we can build here using natural materials. We also have a number of more recently built uh, houses that are more conventional with green construction methods and um, they're just not as aesthetically interesting to me. So most of the buildings that I like here are unusual and natural. Here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, every building has a name instead of an address, which is I think the way it used to be back hundreds of years ago. My house is named The Flouch after a property my family owned in England back in the early 1900s. I guess my house is my favorite for practicality because it works really well for me and I like the design. My house is built with post and beam framing using connectors instead of timber framing joinery. I wanted it to go up fast and I didn't know much about timber frame joinery at the time. It has straw bale walls on three sides and the south side has likely straw with stick framing since it needed more support for a lot of windows for passive solar heating. The passive solar design incorporating thermal curtains on the windows allows for solar heating on sunny winter days. This makes a big difference in the amount of firewood needed to heat it with the wood stove. The cantilever design is reminiscent of buildings in old European cities where the upper floors hang out over the street and have knee braces in their timber frames. The exterior finish is lime plaster and the interior is earthen plaster. This fresco lime plaster finish allows for a deeper color to the house and it's held up over eight years now without fading. My house has the basic things I need. A kitchen with running cold water, <laughs> if that's what you see as a need to have cold water, a cistern for rainwater catchment, a bathroom, lots of natural light, a little root cellar, a backfeeding solar power system, and plenty of living and storage space. I use our common house and swimming pond for showering. The only unnatural materials in the house are the concrete foundation, made of reclaimed urbanite and concrete block, the fastener is used to connect the framing and trim, a bit of tar paper, the roofing tin, the windows and doors, and the electrical components. Besides those items, my house in time would break down to dirt if not maintained. I kind of like that idea. All right, now we're going to go down the road to Kyle's crazy house, the Nestle, as I call it, and I've done a few videos on this house already. I won't say a whole lot about the Nestle because I've made a couple of videos on it already that I'll link to at the end of this one and in the description. I love the exterior of the Nestle for its unusual shape and look. 
It's so organic and beautiful. The cob is what makes the walls so organic shaped. I like that it's earth berm too and blends into the surrounding land. There's a layer of pink foam polystyrene insulation in the cob walls to provide some insulation. It's heated by a wood stove in winter and possibly some passive solar gain. The earth berm really makes a difference in the summer, keeping the house cool with thermal mass. As far as systems, the house is still pretty limited. It has a connection to our power co-op that provides solar and wind power. The house does have a cistern, but I'm not sure it's hooked up to be used yet. The interior isn't finished yet, and I don't know when it will be, but if it ever gets done, I'm sure it will be amazing. I also love how the gardens around it are so integrated with the house. It's like garden-house combo. There are even kiwi vines climbing up it and creating an arbor canopy. Definitely it's the aesthetics that impress me most about the house. This is part of the potential of natural materials, the organic design. All right, next we're gonna go down the path here through the shady draw to Woodhenge. If you wanna support my channel, you can do that through Patreon now. I'm not currently making special content for patrons, but you can pitch in a specific amount for each new video I make. This will give me more motivation to produce more videos, and you'll actually get content every time you contribute. Alternatively, you can send a donation directly through PayPal in the link in the description below. Woodhenge has a lot going on in it, and the interior is beautiful. Fortunately for this one, I do have some interior footage to show. The house has straw bale walls and earthen plaster finish inside and out. This isn't something I'd recommend because earthen plaster needs more maintenance and tends not to hold up to the elements like lime plaster does. The builders of this house made large overhangs and treated the exterior plaster with linseed oil to keep it from getting weathered as fast. The house's framing is a combination of roundwood timbers and stick framing. It's also ready with these solar hot water panels which also have yet to be connected to a system. I don't necessarily find the exterior aesthetically pleasing, but the interior is beautiful, and I love all the potential systems the house is equipped to have. The house has an earthen floor underneath a brick surface. There's even radiant floor tubing in the earthen floor, but it has yet to be hooked up to a water heating system. It also has a wood stove, heat pump, and some passive solar design to work together to heat the place. It has a loft above the main living area and a kind of off-grid kitchen. And though the house does have that off-grid kitchen in there, they enclose this space under this overhang back here and it does have the potential to be a kitchen, like a full-fledged kitchen with systems put in. There would have to be a door knocked in the straw bale wall to get access between the house in this area, or it could just be a little guest room. But Woodhenge, definitely one of my favorite houses at Dancing Rabbit. And the next house in our tour is Straw Tron, which is just not that far away. And Straw Tron is one of those houses that the exterior is pretty cool, but it's the interior that really blows people away and that I'm amazed by. This is the work of Ziggy and April and many other people who taught and attended various workshops they hosted to build the house. Ziggy is fairly well known in natural building circles and I'll link to more info on this house on his website in the description. The house is featured in the book Small Homes from Shelter Publications. 
Some of the features I like on the outside are the porch and the living roof. It's a traditional timber frame straw bale building with exterior lime plaster and interior earthen plaster. I wish I could do a little tour of the interior, but the owners are away right now. I did, however, get permission to use some photographs from Ziggy's website for this video. The timbers are exposed on the inside, and you can see the joinery and all the beautiful woodwork. There's a spiral wooden stairway leading to the loft, with treads that are mortised into a post going up through the second floor. The house doesn't have much in the way of systems. It's connected to our renewable energy power co-op, but it lacks a cistern or water system. It's mostly living space in the house, but it has had an off-grid kitchen set up in the past. To me, Strawtron exemplifies the potential of the beauty of natural building. There was so much time and effort put into the aesthetic flares, and it paid off in a warm, homey feel to the house. You feel like you could be living hundreds of years ago, only far more comfortably. And this was one of Ziggy and April's first building projects. Now they host regular natural building and timber framing workshops in Berea, Kentucky. You can find out more by visiting theyearofmud.com. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a project I'd been working on. I've started my own solar powered bookkeeping business called Soul Power Bookkeeping. And this is another way that you can help me and support my channel is by hiring my bookkeeping services. I've been doing this kind of work for decades, but this is the first time I've set up my own official business. So if your small sustainable business or any kind of business is in need of bookkeeping services, uh, you can go to my website soulpowerbookkeeping.com and set up a free consultation. The link is in the description. Some of the services I offer are conversions from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online, cleaning up your books, and then monthly bookkeeping tasks such as reconciliations, reports, and financial analysis. I'm looking for new clients right now and I'd love to help you get your books organized. So not only are you getting better financial record keeping for your business, but it's all solar powered and mostly off grid when I'm at Dancing Rabbit. My services are completely virtual, so no matter where you are, I can connect and help you streamline your bookkeeping workflows to save you money and time. So the last house on the tour is Cat's Cradle and I did a few videos on Cat's Cradle when it was being built. It was about halfway done and it was pretty incredible then and now it's done and I really want to go back and do a revisit video and that's coming but this will be just a little summary. I'll give you a little sneak peek with this video. <laughs> Cat's Cradle is a round straw bale house with wood lap siding on the exterior with an underlay of earthen plaster and earthen interior plaster. I think the original plan had been to cover the outside in earthen or lime plaster, but when the current owner bought the house, she opted for wood siding. It will probably hold up much better over the long term than earthen plaster would have. I haven't been back to the house until now to see it in its mostly finished state. I have to say, I'm kind of giving away a lot in this video, but I'll have a lot more detail in the exclusive Cat's Cradle video that's coming. I was amazed at the level of detail in this house. This really is a swanky natural building. The flourishes can't begin to be covered in this little teaser. This building showcases just about every kind of natural building method there is. You can't necessarily tell by looking at the finished product, but there's wattle and daub, straw bale, light clay straw, cob, medium clay straw, earthen floors, earthen plaster, cob bottle walls, cordwood, and lime plaster. There's reclaimed maple tongue and groove flooring on the walls, a cork floor, and radiant floor tubing. The water system isn't yet working to heat the floors, but it has a heat exchanger in the wood cook stove. And there's running water that's heated with a UV filter. An underground cistern catches rainwater from the roof. The huge kitchen space provides plenty of room for cooking. I don't know if I would even want to use the walnut live edge table in the middle of the space because I'd worry I'd make a mark in it. The house has two large rooms in addition to the main round living space. It also has a pantry that is insulated from the rest of the house and unheated. And of course a sunroom that can be blocked off from the rest of the house or opened up to let passive solar heat in. As I was leaving my tour of Cat's Cradle, Kyle, 
of my Kyle's Crazy House video was working on the woodshed and future berm of the home. He wanted to tell me a little more about his plan and his thinking in the design of the shed, but I'll have to save that for a future video. All right, so those are five of my favorite houses at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village. Um, there's many more here, and I've got a whole other video that I'm going to do with five more. If you ever get the chance to come here and visit, it's the best way to see all the spectacular houses that we've got here. Just so many different examples of natural buildings, unique buildings. Because we don't have building codes, we can do a lot of creative things and also a lot of sustainable things. Come and visit if you can. Check out our tour dates on our website. We're kind of nearing the end of the season, so we're finishing up the tours for the season. You might have to wait until next year, but check out dancingrabbit.org for uh, those tour dates. So give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button and also click on notifications to get regular notifications when I do upload a new video. And I'll see you next time. So this is my friend Cricket. She's visiting with me for a few days. I've had her last three weeks a few times and taking care of her. And uh, she's a pretty good bunny hunter. She just caught a bunny, which is the bunny that's been taunting me for months now. She's a cutie too. Right, Cricket? You're a good girl. You're a good puppy, yeah. <laughs>